Welcome! My name is Melanie and today I'd like to share some best practices on how to grow your revenue by making your ad placements more viewable. If you'd like to review the basics of ad viewability first, take a look at our first video of this mini-series that will give you an overview of ad viewability and its three pillars, lazy loading, ad positioning and ad speed. You can find the video linked in the description box below. In today's video, we'll guide you through the steps to improve your ad viewability. First, we show you how to enable lazy loading. Then, we'll cover the best practices for positioning your ads and enhancing your ad speed. Let's start with how to enable lazy loading. As you might have heard in our previous video, lazy loading is the technique of loading content smarter, meaning just in time for it to show on the screen. Doing this reduces network traffic and frees up computing resources on end-user devices, making your website faster. This video will focus on the built-in method Enable Lazy Load in Google Publisher Tag, the ad tagging library for Google Ad Manager. Lazy loading works by loading ads when they are close to the viewport. A viewport refers to the content that is currently displayed to the user. The lazy load thresholds used in Google Publisher Tag are broken down into two parts, fetch and render. Fetch is when we request the ad over the network and render is when we render the ad on the page. So, based on that, let's cover the main settings you can adjust when enabling lazy loading. Let's start with fetch margin percent. Fetch margin percent is the minimum distance from the current viewport a slot must be before we fetch the ad as a percentage of viewport size. A value of zero means the ad is fetched when the slot enters the viewport, 100 means when the ad is one viewport away, and so on. Another important setting is render margin percent. This refers to the minimum distance from the current viewport a slot must be before we render an ad. This allows for prefetching the ad, but waiting to render and download other sub-resources. The value works just like fetch margin percent as a percentage of viewport. The last important setting is mobile scaling. This allows margins on mobile devices to be resized. For example, a value of 2 will multiply all margins by 2 on mobile devices, increasing the minimum distance a slot can be before fetching and rendering. So, let's get to the actual implementation of Enable Lazy Load in Google Publisher Tag. To enable lazy loading for your site, you'll need to edit the JavaScript code that you already have to set up ads. You won't need to do any work in Google Ad Manager directly. Here, you can see an example for a page with two ad slots. Now, we show you how you can enable lazy loading by doing some simple coding. Lazy loading is configured at page level, so even though this example has two ad slots, the lazy load settings only need to be set once. We insert the code before the enable services part. This ensures lazy loading is configured before the Google Publisher tag services are enabled and ad requests are sent. In this example, we're setting the fetch margin to 200. That means an ad will fetch when it's two viewports away from the screen. Then, we're setting the render margin to 100, meaning the ad will render when it's one viewport away from the screen. Lastly, we'll set mobile scaling to 1, meaning mobile and desktop will have the same margins. That's it! You now have enabled lazy loading on your website. Let's talk a bit more what these settings mean in practice, how they work and how you can optimize them. This is how our implemented code will work in practice, shown here on a mobile viewport. As we scroll down the web page, you can see how ads are being requested when they're two viewports away and rendering when they're one viewport away. So they're ready when they enter the viewport. Some last tips on how to optimize your settings. The optimal settings will vary depending on your type of site, users and markets you're active in. From our experience, one approach that has worked well is to start with a high value for render margin, such as 200. With that as a starting point, you can slowly decrease the value over time. At the same time, monitor your core business metrics, such as viewable impressions. Stop when you reach a point where you no longer see any significant increases in viewability. When that happens, you've likely reached a point of diminishing returns. 
An important warning for you to keep in mind is any aggressive lazy load optimization requires careful A-B testing. Otherwise, it's possible that you're optimizing for a specific viewability percentage, but sacrificing viewable impressions, introducing layout shifts for end users, and showing black rectangles. If you're unsure, it's better to select the larger value to avoid missing out on potential viewable impressions and clicks. Lastly, when implementing lazy loading, avoid these two common mistakes. First, for render margin, make sure you don't choose values that are too small. If render margin values are too small, the ad might not render when it enters the viewport. Second, avoid using the same value for fetch margin and render margin. The fetch margin value should be larger than the render margin value. We want the fetch to happen well before the render. Let's continue with some helpful tips and best practices for the second important pillar of ad viewability, the positioning of ads. First, identify where viewers spend the most time on your site and place ads in those sections. In general, one of the most viewable ad positions is right above the fold in the right rail, not at the top of the page, so take the time to really understand your user's behavior. However, don't rule out below the fold ads. While above the fold ads on average have higher viewability, below the fold ads still have significant viewability rates. It's important to understand that there is no one fold for all users. With multiple device types, screen resolutions, and browser setups to consider, it's impossible to pick one perfect ad positioning. One solution is to measure the scroll depth of users on your website. Understanding this allows you to position your ad slots where most users will see them, boosting viewability. The most viewable ad sizes are generally the vertical units. They stay on the screen for the longest amount of time. Good examples are 300 by 600 or 160 by 600 pixels. However, some horizontal sizes can also lead to high viewability. While taller ad units have a tendency to be more viewable, shorter units are more likely to have 50% of the pixels in view if users aren't scrolling. To find the right ad sizes for your ad slots, consider identifying where viewers are spending their time on certain pages and placing ad slots in those locations. To test this, try moving slots higher on your website and app to understand if the viewability rate changes. As you can see, there isn't a one-size-fits-all solution for the positioning of ads. Our main lesson is to always test and measure what works best for a given situation to boost your viewability the most. When you're ready to start testing ad positioning and ad manager, take a look at the resources in the description below. Last but not least, let's talk about some best practices for the third pillar of ad viewability, ad speed. Ad speed is a topic that requires some effort to fix. Keep in mind this general rule. For positions above the fold, loading ads quicker is essential to improving viewability. The techniques to improve ad speed are similar to the ones used to improve overall page speed. So, a great first step is to make sure you've covered the basic recommendations that Page Speed Insights gives you. This is a great resource to use for running reports on the performance of a page. To test page speed on your site, visit pagespeed.web.dev and type in your URL. At the top of that site, you can check exactly what your users are experiencing. If they're not having a fast experience, there are some recommendations in the diagnostics that might help you find areas to improve. To sum up, it is important to always include tests in multiple iterations in the redesign process. Each site is different and ad viewability depends on the device and user's behavior. Thanks for watching this video on our best practices and tips for improving your ad viewability. For more support, you can find links to our help center and other useful resources in the description below. And make sure to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below so you can stay up to date on our latest tips for Google App Manager. See you next time.